So let's go ahead and start the meeting. First thing is uh, set the Pledge of Allegiance. Tomorrow night, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of which it stands, one nation, under God, liberty and justice for all. The next discussion will be the board calendar. Did we bring this up for a reason? Or, or we got to take some off, delete something, or what are we doing with this? This is for every board work session, just for review. I'm sorry, what was that? This is something that we place on the agenda, the board work session agenda, every month for review. Oh, okay, okay. Any comments? Our concerns or need changes on, on the board calendar. Um, I guess the only thing, only comment I have is um, I, it was just nice to see those items that we talked about in our Saturday board retreat, um, those items added to the calendar. Um, so that was really nice to see that um, put in there. And certainly, if there are adjustments to be made uh, as the year progresses, uh, we can make those uh, changes uh, on the fly. So uh, this is a tentative plan. Uh, I, I like the plan, and it reflects the conversation that we had, uh, as you said, Melissa. Any other comments? Hearing none, we're going to move on to the first reading. Of board policies. Any comments? Any concerns? Anything we need to address? It's just the first reading. You will be able to get a chance to read to go over it again. None from me, Stanley. Good questions, George. I think. Yeah, I don't have any further questions or follow ups. Um, thank you to. Um, for all the detailed information that you got on my questions. Some of it came from um, my own personal experience in my work. Um, so I was quite interested in the whole drug testing and, and that particular issue. So so thank you for that wonderful um, feedback and the detailed information on, on all accounts. So. I'd like to remind the board that if there are any questions that you may have, certainly bring them up during our weekly meetings, and we can address those as well at that time. Like I say, as the first reading, we'll be able to, to go over this again. Hearing no other questions, we're going to move on to the, the most important part of the agenda, return to school. Yes, uh, thank you, Stanley. The, uh, we have a, a number of voices that are present this evening. Probably the greatest number of members of the administrative team that you'll see uh, the entire year. And it gives us an opportunity to uh, share the successes and the hard work that has taken place over the last several months. And uh, we've all been very skittish, nervous, anxious, uh, and hoping for the best. And we've had two very good days. And we can hear some information about how the first two days have gone. Of course, uh, we will use this information as a comparison uh, when we uh, reconvene on the 17th of the month for our regular board meeting where we'll provide you a complete update on the status of our enrollment and our remote learning program as well. So uh, since we have so many people that will be speaking tonight, I will uh, stop my comments at this time and we'll first hear from Lynn Rosalini. You're muted, Lynn. Hello, Lynn. It should be on now. Yes. 
I do remember from last meeting you had a hard time hearing me, so wave a hand if, if I, if, uh, you can't hear me. And I, I do want to say good evening, and I'm so glad to be here. This opening of school year has been unlike any I have ever experienced, and I'm sure that's true for, for everyone, for our students and families uh, and all of our staff. And although it has been different, I think there's a lot to acknowledge and recognize. And, and first, I just want to give a shout out to our principals and our central office staff uh, and our, our teachers. They have been working so long and so hard. Our principals have been working hard to balance classes, They've been reaching out to parents and help all the staff. And uh, they really deserve a lion's share of the credit of doing something they've never done before for starter school. So I want to thank them. And our central office staff has been working hard. Our HR and payroll staff have a big learning curve to learn how to deal with all the ins and outs of new legislation, uh, laws, and requirements concerning the pandemic. So hope you can be recognized to thank them, and I really do appreciate them. So with that, I'm going to get down to some numbers and some information for you. Uh, does anybody here know exactly how many employees we have in the Oregon School District besides Marcy Graham? Okay, well, we have 167 certificated teachers, and that includes our administrators and our superintendent, who is certificated. We have 151 classified staff, and that includes our non represented people, like a Marcy Bannon or that. Um, in addition to that, we have over 40 coaches, and of those coaches, 25 work within the district. We also have certificated teachers who substitute for us, and 51 classified subs. In addition to that, we sometimes have seasonal people. So our total employment for a year is 427 individuals. That's a lot of people working together to make things work for students in our community. Right now, we have no different elementary positions that we choose and plan to uh, fill at this time. And we didn't fill several because we were concerned about the accuracy of our projection during the pandemic. Uh, so at this point, staffing is stable uh, in terms of open positions. Right now, our principal, as I mentioned, has been found through classes from our uh, online to our academy at the elementary. We have five point FTE who are supporting the online academy. Middle school has four FTE, and currently we have one point four FTE at the high school. You know, our typical uh, laws and legislation are providing uh, relief for, for families and individuals who are impacted by the COVID virus. We have staff members right now who uh, have submitted waivers uh, asking to be excluded from teaching. And at, at just at this point, we have only seven staff members who have committed, uh, or excuse me, submitted paperwork for us we have heard from others. I expect that number to grow as we move closer to in-person learning, and we'll keep you posted on those numbers. Each of those applications has to be dealt with individually, and we are looking at what the best match is for them, how do they fit under the law, what are the leave requirements and, and benefits they can access, and then how will we fill or provide the service that they should be doing if they were able. And so, got our hands full, I think those are going to increase. Meanwhile, as we, we do that work, we are partnering with our contacts and agencies like Labor and Industries, uh, uh, Workers' Compensation, so that ensure that we have the best and latest information. 
So we're busy, uh, but we're busy for a good reason because we've got our kids back engaged and we're really excited to be here. So thank you. Any questions? Lynn, would you be able to share those numbers electronically with us? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, I've already given them to Bonnie, and so she can do that for you. Perfect. I appreciate it. Thanks. Yeah. Now, Tony, you're muted. You're muted, Tony. Tony, you're muted. Uh, each of the cabinet members that are presenting this evening uh, have notes that they will be providing to Bonnie. So board members do not need to write down any notes. Uh, Bonnie will do a great job providing those in the minutes of our meeting tonight. So uh, we thought about that in advance. So rest assured, we'll have an accurate uh, display that's presented to you. And then you'll be able to make comparisons uh, with the numbers that you hear tonight with what you'll hear uh, on the 17th at a regular board meeting. So, if I, I suppose I'm next, right? Okay. Hi, um, thank you. Thank you for having me uh, talk a little bit tonight about uh, student support services and all the things that we get going on there. And so, what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about next week. Um, so, I've presented my special ed plan to the board in previous meetings. Um, and for those of you who remember, we have basically a, a rolling, a rolling um, uh, plan for bringing our students highest need back into the school district face to face, um, starting with September 8th, um, which is next Tuesday. Um, and remember, those students are, in, so if you, in regards to a definition, those are the students who require intensive educational supports, who have not accessed or cannot access aids and services, were impacted by the loss of in-person services, and are not equitably served um, in a remote environment. And so we have 29 students who are starting school next week on site um, in a combination of hybrid and also full in full service Monday through Thursday because Friday is when we clean our buildings. Um, we have 29 students starting next week, including our students who will be re returning to school outside the school district. Starting on September 21st, um, we'll have another group of students, next highest need, who will also be remote and um, in, in person. And those are the kids who require intensive educational supports. Um, but also who have not accessed aids and services um, in basically related back to um, the spring of last year. And Chris, for those, I'm yes. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, when you say in person, basically in person education outside of the, our district buildings, that means it's happening in their home or is there a third location? Right. So in regards to what I'm talking about um, at home, so we got right now we have at home services. No. Um, starting next week, at home services, in school services, mm -hmm. and also out of district services at specialty schools. Got it. Thank you. So starting September 21st as the next wave of students, um, approximately 100 to 200 students at different times of the week um, coming in uh, to our buildings in a hybrid methodology. Um, and then uh, starting October 5th, another wave of students uh, coming in. Uh, we'll know the numbers of those particular within the next week because we have to provide transportation and we need to know within the next seven to 10 days um, regarding the transportation piece. Are there any? So that's basically the plan that I presented three weeks ago. We've maintained that plan. Um, and it's really a good picture of what it's going to look like uh, when we start bringing our students back um, in a smaller group of students. I'll be really honest with you. Um, I've never worked harder for 29 students in my career. Um, and uh, thinking about bringing back half of the school district, AB, um, is it's going to be a lot of work for the task force and the people on the ground. Um, you know, from all the things related to safety uh, to logistics, uh, to where the students are going to be learning so that we maintain groups of five or less 
um, so that we're social distancing, uh, so that people have the um, uh, PPE that they need, uh, and making sure that everyone is screened prior to coming into our buildings. Um, those particular things are complex, um, and also um, working with families, because we have families um, who are concerned. They want their kids to go to school, um, but they're also concerned about their children. And then you also have staff who feel much the same way. And so we're in a position where um, right now this is a really good test uh, for our system uh, regarding, uh, regarding bringing our students back. Um, also, we'll be utilizing five of our buses, five of our buses to bring the students to school. We we'll do utilizing two bus drivers for each bus. One person will be screening the students as they walk onto the bus. One will obviously be driving. Um, and um, we have two vans that are going out to the outside school, outside of district um, placements. So we have two vans. And then we also have four buses who will be de delivering lunches um, out and about in our community. Um, the students uh, will be served uh, by basically seven. We have four certified staff uh, at Ording, uh, five at Carmagan Ridge. Ording Middle School has four. Ording High School has five certified staff. And we have 7.8 .8 itinerants serving the students who are coming on board. During this time, uh, one of the things that are going to be occurring is the fact that we've, uh, regarding students who have been enrolled in special ed this year, one of the things that Tony wanted me to share with you um, is enrollment for our special education students. Last year at this time, we had 427 students. Um, this year, starting off the school year, we have 392, a net loss of whatever that is, between 427 and 392. I wasn't a good math whiz. But anyway, um, those, that, those are the numbers. However, since that point um, that I grabbed those numbers, I um, want to let you know is that those numbers are slowly but surely increasing. So I'm confident that we're going to come closer to that 427. Tony also would like, would like me to talk a little bit about how many trans, uh, choice transfers there were are as at this point. Um, right now, um, we've had a total of 50 students waiver into the school district, um, which is up by nine students from the previous school district the previous year. This year, we have not rejected any students wanting to waive into the Ording School District. So we're up by nine. Um, and then releases, as of last week, um, we've been, uh, released uh, 289 students, um, which is down from last year. Um, but we have 30 pending. So as of last week, um, we're still, in regards to tro choice transfer requests, we're still a little under 100 students less than last year, which is good news for enrollment. Um, and then we've had so far this year, um, and I'm talking about last week, a lot of things have changed since last week, um, 78 students have filed for an intent to homeschool. Um, last thing is around school, student and staff safety. Uh, one of the things that we did is each of the buildings uh, created a safety plan for all of their buildings. Um, those plans describe how we're going to maintain those social distancing requirements, uh, maintain good hygiene, such as frequent hand washing. As you're going to see in our buildings, we have hand washing stations everywhere. Um, uh, we also have a protocol for cleaning and disinfecting all of our classrooms. Um, we provided our staff with PPE guidance. Uh, we have also have our health screenings through attestations each week, each day, actually, each day. And we've also um, working on our sick employee and student practices and regarding um, some of those things. And so one of the things, if we have a sick employee, there is a quarantine room identified in each building. We also have a emergency response plan related to exposure response. And we've also provided the first day of, first day of school the first day? No. During the three days last three days last week, we also did employee training regarding what the protocols are for um, uh, uh, attestations, uh, the use of um, face masks, uh, hand cleaning, believe it or not, um, and what they do if they um, have uh, any symptoms related to COVID-19. So I kind of went all over the page with this. Um, are there any questions about special ed? Enrollment, 
and safety. I have one comment, and I'm first. I am I'm so impressed with the work that you've done to get um, our students back into the school, um, our special ed students, to continue their education. My thought, as you were describing the number of students that will be coming into the building, I recognize that we're maintaining all of the social distancing protocols. Um, my thought was optics. And we love that word, but optics from the community, we have the, the benefit, I think, of having our schools right in the middle of town. <laughs> As the community starts to see buses roll in and children walking into the buildings, I would love for our community to understand, you know, the lengths that we're going through to protect the students and to make sure we provide an equitable education for them. So, Tony, maybe on the communication side if we could put something out to explain to all these families who want their children back in the buildings, why are these other kids doing it? Some kind of information out to the community. You're muted, Tony. I certainly will do that. Uh, I think that uh, we want to um, um, be sure to let our community members know that we are not unique, that thank goodness all the yes. school districts around the state of Washington are providing special attention and care and support to yeah. special education population. Thank goodness. Only in America does this happen. And I'm very proud of the fact that we are offering these services on a limited basis to those that need it very much. So I'll be happy to do that. Great. Thank you. The other thing is, is that since we're a small community, a lot of those families, my own, are lots of people know us. And so they haven't got a problem with asking us, talking to us about it. And so um, I, I, I will, I think it's good if we remind the parents to be advocates too, as to why, yeah. why for them and not for others. So. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I saw a couple parents today, and they wanted to give me a hug, and I said, um, no, no, no. Um, I'll, I'll take you up on that later. And so, yeah. but anyway, um, it was we very COVID good. Hug. COVID hug. COVID hug. So I said, oh, thanks. So I'm not, the, not right now. Well, I'll, I'll give you a, a JJ artwork, uh, okay? Oh, yeah. And I know what those look like. He's a good artist. He's an artist. Yes. <laughs> so, Chris, you mentioned enrollment. Do we have a, a view against what we budgeted so far? I think Marcy Bannon would be able to talk about that particular piece. Oh, wait a part. Nice. I know. But I also don't want to give the wrong answer. And that will come up in her uh, when she has her time. So we'll okay. know what That's great. Thank you. Next up, Marcy. Oh, so my part. Yay. Okay, so my department has been working really, really hard on a lot of different things. Learning, um, learning new rules. The S, ugh, there's so many things. I'm not even going to list them all. Everyone in our district is slammed. Everyone's busy. Um, <laughs> get to my numbers. So as you know, from the last board meeting, um, we budgeted 2,665 kids in our district. That included 2613, that was K-12, K and then about 52 running start kids. As of today, and I, you have to take this number with a grain of salt, and I'm going to give you some reason why, but as of today, our current number is down 226.42 from that figure. And some of the contributing factors because of that um, could be lowering it artificially, um, but there's a lot of reasons. One, it's only the second day of school. It is before Labor Day. Um, traditionally, in most districts I've lived in and worked in, mostly worked in, I've only lived really in this one, um, if you start before Labor Day, you have a lower count before Labor Day. It's, it's one of those weird things. It's great to start, but your enrollment's lower before that. Um, September enrollment is always lower than October enrollment. Uh, we still have... With this, with the great job that our families and our parents and our staff have done, we still have kids unrolling, unenrolling and enrolling every day. We have kids that are changing from A to B and back again, depending on what they feel like that day. 
Um, we have kindergarten that doesn't even start until the 8th, so we don't know for a fact those numbers are good or not. And then running start numbers, which were budgeted 52, doesn't start until closer to the end of September. So those numbers I don't even know until, we don't even count those until October. The, the Pierce County College and Green River, we don't even start counting that until October. Um, I can say we had about, eight, in our budget, we only budgeted for eight ALE kids, and we're currently somewhere around 259. So there's a definite switch through there. Um, some other things that we also have a system configurations that are working behind our scenes that could be um, when we compare the numbers I see to the numbers that I talked to Alicia today, I talked to Dave today, um, Cliff, we, our numbers don't exactly match. So we know there's some discrepancies there that we'll work on and we'll have them figured out before our final, final number that we report to the state. But they're, but the, so the 226 is down. Um, and then the next question, of course, is what does that mean financially? Well, financially, that is a decrease of about $2.1 million. Um, that number does change um, because we also budgeted. So we get money, additional dollars for K-3 class size. And what we can prove our K-3 kids to um, teacher and music and PE teacher, the ratios, and we budgeted 19.78, which is about our average in our district. Lowering that to 17, because right now I could say we have a great K-3 class size ratio. They're pretty awesome. We're probably going to get about an extra 500,000 just from lowering that from 19, a little, just under 20 to 17. So we could get more money there. So it's really hard for me to say what we are going to lose because as you guys may or may not know, our enrollment isn't based on one month. It's based on our average FTE for every month from September through June. So having a low number in September doesn't mean that we're going to be that low for the year because the money we get is based on our average FTE from September through June. So should our enrollment be down on September and maybe it's really high in January? Well, they average out to about the middle, but you've got September, October, November, December, you got lots of different times in there. And before I go on to the next section, does anyone want to talk, ask me any questions? And I didn't even go into SPED numbers because honestly, until I heard Chris today, I didn't, I didn't do SPED amounts or numbers. Um, I didn't do that, that dollar figure because it's, yeah. it's. And, and we don't put in our final, final tally until next week. And mm -hmm. so we'll know more next week regarding when we put in the, P two two three H. Yeah, yeah, and we'll know more. Yeah, Marcy, I want to. I, I you know I know there's two hundred and twenty six yep. that's down, and I completely appreciate your explanation about how those numbers are in so much flux. But coming into this year, knowing that we committed to a budget, my stomach with in knots, wondering what the impact would be, and I'm actually feeling kind of good right now. I know things are totally going to change, and it may as the weeks go on, but um, I just appreciate the work you've done to wrangle up those numbers and present a picture for us. Thank yeah, and I, unfortunately, I just, I can't give you exacts right now. I can give you what could happen. I mean, really, our, so there's some numbers that go up and down based on our enrollment. We could end up getting more LEA per kid because we have lower numbers. And so it's kind of hard to say. Yes, our levy number is set, but our apportionment and our LEA change by our enrollment. So we may not end up, I mean, even if it was 2.1 million, I don't think it's going to be 2.1 million. I think it's going to be way less than that. So I'm not stressed yet about it because I know that as the year goes on and more kids come to school, our enrollment's going to go up. Yeah. And we, and we understand this early in the year, it's only the, the right. second day, so... We appreciate yeah. the work you're doing. Good, because I'm stressed. I'm stressed over talking to you guys about it. So good. I'm glad you understand. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to be okay. <laughs> okay. Is there any other questions about that part? Because then I'll go into a couple other things. Okay. So the other part. Um, so you guys may have heard. Oh, I'm sorry. Did someone start talking? I didn't mean to talk over you. Okay. Um, so a couple other new things that have happened recently, as you guys know, things are changing really fast in a lot of places in, within our district. 
So up until a couple of weeks ago, we didn't know exactly what we were going to get for transportation funding for the year or how we could spend it or what was going to happen. So I don't remember exactly when it was, but I think it was in the last two weeks. Um, the state came out with an increased abilities to spend the money we get from transportation funding. It's a, it's a specific funding source that we get. It's based on ridership. We know our ridership part is going to be lower um, depending on our, that. But the ability to spend the money was the secondary issue because if you don't have, if you're getting the funds but you can't spend it on the tasks that you're allowed to, um, that creates a different problem. So they increased the, the ability to spend the dollars. So now instead of just being able to spend them on to from school, we can also spend them on delivering lunches out to the community. We can spend it on, on delivering devices or delivering homework or delivering packets. We can spend it on more things than we could in the past. The state is changing the, um, the accounting rules to allow us to spend those funds, which is a programmatic fund, on more things. So that's, that's huge. Um, the other thing that changed much more recently, that, ch that changed on Monday, is um, we can now, rather than having to serve, serve and charge students, we're back to our spring, spring feeding of where it's grab and go. Um, and we can feed zero to 18 age. Doesn't matter. As long as they're zero to 18, we can feed them. We don't have to keep track of them the way we were going to have to. We're going to have to treat... Um, anyone who picked up a lunch, like they were getting a lunch from a school, we we're going to have to keep track of it. Were they free? Were they reduced? Did they have to pay? We we're going to have to keep track of every kid. The state USDA it extended the waiver from the spring on Monday. So now we're giving out meals to everybody. We started off with a meal service at OMS daily from 1030 to 1230. Um, our first day, we had 169 meals. We had people waiting. We didn't expect that many at all. Because, um, yeah, we were, we were not expecting that many because we were going by the summer lunch program that happened in the city. And we, found, we had heard that that was about 40 per day. So 169 was way more than we expected. That's okay. The ladies all adjusted. Um, today it was down to 124, and that's okay, too. We have four locations being added as of Monday that Chris referenced that um, we're going to be serving during um, our non mostly non-synchronous learning times. So, no, I can never say it right. They're not synchronous learning times. So when the kids are not supposed to be in front of a computer, we're delivering from 12 to 12.15 at four more locations. So um, starting Tuesday, we'll have one going on to, um, up to Prairie Ridge. We'll have one in Deer Park. We'll have one on 177th and one in Chinook Estates on Patterson, up on Patterson. And so those are our, most, um, our, most of our areas, we started with them because we believe those are the most needy areas to make sure meals got to them. Um, what else? So other things. Um, oh, so we also got some extra funds. Um, you guys may have heard or not heard. Um, we got two chunks of money from this, from different angles of CARES funds from two different sources. So we had gotten a grant from the state um, we got the amount of $325,000 that has to be spent by August of next year. And that's what they call ESSER funds, which is element. It's an acronym. I'm not going to go to It's CARES money from the state. We can spend it on things like um, technology, PPE, training for employees on technology, and supporting students furthest from educational justice. We also got a second chunk of money um, that we just got notified of last Friday um, from a uh, amount given to us from Pierce County. So Pierce County also had some CARES funds and they are dividing it up with all the school districts and private schools and I think some businesses in the area. And so that, that set of money is about a little over 95000 and it has to be spent before December 30th. And it, it's kind of generic. It's um, necessary expenditures incurred due to the public health emergency with respect to COVID-19 that weren't included in budget. So it's pretty vague, um, but I'm going to read more into it and see that. So that those were some nice things that have happened. Um, and then my department's been working hard. That's all I can say. They, they've been killing it. Um, we're working on closing the year. Our fiscal year ended August 31st. So we're working on getting all the expenditures in the right year, getting things paid for, getting people paid, learning all the new rules of um, 
all the different kinds of leaves that we're going to need to monitor and how we're going to have to claim them on our taxes for the district to get our credits because they don't come any other way. So they're doing a hard job. Any other questions? I do have a question. First, a comment. Thank you, Marcy. I um, always learn a little bit more each time you speak it without fail. And um, I appreciate all your hard work. I can tell you're incredibly stressed out, <laughs> but I thank you. Um, but one of the things, one of the documents that Tony had forwarded us in regards to transportation, um, towards the end of that letter or document, all the good stuff was there. And then it was something about guaranteed funding um, and that the governor or whoever right. it was, um, that it wasn't. Can you explain guaranteed funding to me and how that might or might not affect this? Yeah. And so what that is, is so we get the transportation funding is the worst, the hardest to explain. And I believe I, the last I heard, there's four people in the state that can actually explain the way that transportation is funding. I'm not one of those four. So I'll give you the generalities of the way I understand it. Um, there's a whole bunch of um, different formulas in a, in the system called STARS. Some of the things that are part of that formula are our ridership, which means three times a year we keep track of how many kids are on the bus, and that determines parts of our funding. Another part of our funding is determined by our expenditures from the previous year. Another part is our efficiency rating, which means how full do we get our buses, how efficient is our transportation department. So those are the factors that go into our funding for this year. Well, two of the ridership dates um, – were last year, so we're kind we're okay on those ones. But our, our fall date, we may not have much ridership. So our transportation funding is probably going to be decreased a bit because of that ridership um, that we're not getting to do. So we don't know exactly what that decrease is. Um, we also know, we do know that um, there's been a lot of talk trying to get legislatures when they come back into session, which what, January, I think I heard last. Um, that they may they, they may try to make the, for, the funding formula more explanatory so everyone and uh, can, one can figure out how it's actually working. I know the bits and pieces, but exactly how those pieces work together and which percentages are responsible for which part of it, I couldn't tell you. Thank you. I actually tried to do a Google dive on that formula and threw my hands up and just said, I'm just going to ask Marcy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I appreciate it. Um, I was just a little confused as to kind of what that would mean. Um, but you explained it well enough for me to understand. So thank you so much. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's not that we want kids to come back earlier. We don't. But the more kids we can get on a bus at the ridership window, the better that that, that number will be really is the way that works. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're muted again, Tony. Tony, you're muted again. Steve, as you know, we're at 641, and, and there may be a need to speed up the uh, uh, various presentations, but you have some very important uh, information and in individual voices to uh, present to the board as well. So we're going to try to stay to that 7 o'clock uh, ending time. Thank you, Steve. All right. I'll try to jump in here really quick, and I just want to say up front that if for some uh, point during my introduction I actually slap myself, I don't want you to be alarmed. Uh, there's this combination of things that happens to me when I'm dealing with fatigue uh, during hard times and inspiration from courageous people. So with that, um, as you get ready to hear from our building leaders, I, I just kind of wanted to paint a little bit of a picture for you. There's a saying that goes, you can't lead what you don't know. And I've believed this for years, and I've actually stated it as a truth. Uh, incumbent in this statement is that effective leadership is supported by both deep understanding and thorough preparation. If that were really an undisputed truth, we'd be in a real mess right now. What I've witnessed over the last several weeks is really effective leadership without the benefit of having either deep understanding or the time for the kind of preparation that we're used to. Having spent July building a framework for a hybrid of remote and face-to-face -face learning. We pivoted in August to a full remote learning, utilizing an unfamiliar cu curriculum platform to uh, most people who are going to end up being using it with very little time and prep to do so. I stated in a message to families the other day that we did in a couple of weeks 
what would take months or even years to accomplish. Just the logistics alone in this are daunting. And then if you add to that the human element of the staff who are in the same short amount of time need to unlearn what they have had confidence in in the past and turn around and embrace the unfamiliar and the unknown and be ready and confident in less than three days. Anyone who's ever led a group of people can imagine what that would be, kind of that task would be like. Not just the logistics, but the challenge of inspiring and motivating the people who will do the work, even as the leaders themselves are burying their own doubts. Oh, and let's not forget that concurrently running with that, we have kids and families that need the same inspiration and confidence. Hopefully you had a chance to see some of the videos that came out uh, before school started. There have been videos since school started with online families uh, from all three buildings that are helping our online families get on board. In the midst of these timelines that are constantly changing, preventing any chance for deep understanding of what they're dealing with, and little time to shape or design what was needed to accomplish what I've just spoken about, without exception, I witnessed a new truth. You can lead what you don't know. And it's based on a statement that these guys have been making, which says, together we are strong, and together we can do hard things. Our time is short to give you all the play-by-play -play details in the weeks leading up to our August in-service days or the in-service days themselves, but I want to go on record with you as that a building administrator with 25 years experience, number one, I've never been challenged in the way our leaders have been challenged this summer, and I'm here to tell you that based on that experience about the job and based on what I saw, you have reason to be very proud of these leaders as I am. We weren't without our hiccups, but please don't lose sight of the fact that this had, could have gone wrong in so many disastrous ways, um, and it boggles the mind. But it didn't, and it's not by accident. It's by design. The optimism that our staff feel right now about what they're doing is not by accident. The hundreds of families that had contact with a real live human to help solve their problems on the first day of school was not by accident. Leadership, strong leadership, effective leadership, isn't about being in charge. It's about taking care of those who are in your charge. And that's what I saw from our building leaders. And so before I just turn it over to them to talk about that a little bit, I also want to give a couple of really quick shout outs. One to Jennifer Planellis. We couldn't have done it without her. Amazing what she did for our system and our kids. You're going to hear from Matt Hunvin here in a little bit. We call him our hero, and he continues every single day to be that person. The tech department, the work that they've done, the building secretaries. Lynn mentioned a couple of, I mean, we could go on and on and on. But once again, I think you've heard me say this before. I'm here to say it again. I am so impressed by the people in this district that make this district run. It's so exciting to be a part of it. And so I'd like to turn it over to our principals to give you a little bit of uh, update on what they're seeing in terms of their enrollment trends, as well as maybe a snapshot of how they prepared their schools and what they've seen in the first couple of days. And we'll start with the elementary team. And I emphasize that specifically because one of the things that we saw was these four leaders come together and not treat two separate schools as separate schools, but combine these staff, combine, because our online school for elementary isn't divided by school. It's elementary. And they're collaboratively and co-leading the entire process. It's very exciting. We'll start with the elementary, we'll move to the middle school, and we'll fi uh, finish with the high school. I are just going to stare at each other. So um, it has been an interesting start to the year, um, but we have worked on some numbers to help you understand where we're at. So for OPS, we had a projected um, enrollment of 528 students, um, and this is kindergarten through third. Preschool has a different model um, for projection. As of today, on our class list, we have 363 students. We also, even though the academy 
um, for elementary has both schools in it, we can go through and look which students previously attended Ording Primary. And we have 56 students um, that last year attended Ording Primary that are currently going to attend the academy. With 70 students, I asked Beth to run a report. Um, 70 students that attended our school last year who are not attending Ording School District at all. Um, and some of those students are going to, they filed an intent to homeschool. Some of those students have moved. Um, and so I went through and started looking at name by name. We have students every year that move away. We had a student move to Montana. They had already sold their house. It had nothing to do with COVID. They've been trying to buy in Montana for years. We had um, siblings who were uh, in foster care. They were placed here. And for months, they had, the plan had been to um, reunification with their mom, who's in Seattle. So there's kids in that 70 that would have happened regardless. Um, but I think it helps to understand 18 of those 70 had moved away, and then four had um, moved to PTR for this year. So even out of our 70, four of those are still um, in our system. They're just not at OPS. Um, and then we have worked really hard over the last two days to make contact with every student in that 360 number. So teachers are emailing families, inviting them to a one-on-one -on -one family connection meeting. That even started before the first day. Um, reaching out to families today in between family connection meetings. We've had teachers calling families, um, office staff calling families, and we have, we think about nine students, um, maybe 12, that we have not had any contact with. And we're already putting a plan together to make contact, even if it means going out and knocking and saying, hi, how can we help? Um, so just really quickly, um, Shout out, we have had just some absolutely amazing, amazing support. Um, and I'm going to ask Erin to just briefly share what that's looked like. Okay. Um, first of all, coming to a new family in a new district can sometimes be a challenge, but I feel so at home here. And I want to thank you for helping to make that transition so amazing for me. Um, our team has worked really tirelessly and we're here representing them, but the people that are the most heroic people for me are our office ladies. They are, I mean, I can't even imagine doing any of this work without them. Liz and Beth um, are relentless in their pursuit of excellence and serving our community and serving the staff. And they have a tremendous sense of calm that comes into the office and it spreads throughout our staff. So I just want to make sure that they, I wish I could give them more, but they received, that they received some acknowledgement this evening. PTR. So PTR, we knew we were, our projected enrollment was uh, 674. Um, and we had worries about that number, honestly, beforehand. We had already made some adjustments um, we are down one kindergarten section. Uh, this the staff member for that we've reallocated, and she's going to be going to um, a special position. We also had open, so we've made some adjustments internally to navigate some of that different enrollment. Um, again, I would echo what Christy and Aaron talked about about really going after every single one of our families. I think we're down to eighteen kids right now who we don't know that they, they live on a class list, and we don't know where they're at right now. So we're going after each one of our kids. We've had people calling since the, as soon as we released the survey to say, how, how can we help you? You have a question. What would that question look like? How can we get you somewhere? Families are saying like, I don't know, this is really hard. Cool. Why don't you just stick it out? At least stick it out for a week. Like let's, we can try anything for a week. So we're trying all the creative solutions. Uh, Kristen, I know has some shout outs she wants to do as well. So I just want to pop that over and then pass it off to middle school. Awesome. I do have shout outs. I'm going to try to keep them just to a few right now. I want to really um, honor our elementary school teachers. All of our elementary school teachers are on are, are conducting family communication visits or uh, com communication nights right now. Uh, they have worked tirelessly. Um, our monitors are handing out Chromebooks. Uh, our monitors today asked if they could help make home visits and 
and personally connect with those families. Uh, we've had children that have dropped off the map uh, that joined us in this meet, and they were excited, and it was wonderful to see them. So we're proud of our staff. We're proud of our students. We are lucky. OMS. So in the, at the middle, I think um, one of the things Steve kind of alluded it to, alluded to it at the beginning is the idea of energy. Um, so I actually missed uh, the kickoff days because of the medical event. Um, Kevin took over, um, and we had already kind of executed our plan for um, uh, the three days of professional learning and preparation. And you know, I kind of tried to have uh, something ready to go on Tuesday or. Uh, yeah, Tuesday, no, Wednesday morning uh, before the whole staff. Um, just because I felt one of my staff, and you know what? I just had to get out of the way. It was like trying to hold back a hot ride. Um, they were ready to go, and they didn't want anything to do with us. They wanted to get in front of kids, and um, that's been beautiful to see because as Kevin and I walked through um the building and then visited uh, electronic classrooms. The kids were there. They were excited. They were showing off their dogs. They were happy to be um, reconnected with their peers. Um, it's been the energy of getting our families back together and our kids back together has been one of the most rewarding pieces of this. And we've done it, frankly, by the skin of our teeth. Um, we because of uh, needing to move some staff to the online academy, we rebuilt our master schedule on Monday. My counseling team, that's unheard of. Matt, a 20-year veteran counselor, said, you guys are insane to do that. And um, we got pulled off in 48 hours. We built our entire master schedule. Uh, and today I think it's really important uh, when we get to the numbers um, to recognize the difference between accounting and um, metrics because our accounting is great. Um, my numbers match Marcy's numbers and everything is lined up, but it does mean that um, we're actually, I feel really positive about where we're at. I've got 23 um, students that I haven't seen or tracked down yet. Um, and so my classified staff are starting phone banking tomorrow and we're headed out into the neighborhoods on Tuesday, door knocking with supplies and Chromebooks and food and everything else that it's going to take to engage those kids. So we're really pleased by the result um, that we didn't have the let off um, that we feared and are really down to 23 kids that we need to track down. So that's the update from OMS. Right. Hi, Steve. Uh, uh, Steve is very kind to us. It's very easy to lead when um, you have amazing staff and we have an amazing village that has our backs. So that allows us to do the best work possible. So uh, the credit goes to all the people that are doing the hard work inside the schools and backing us up outside the schools and delivering their kids online. So uh, the high school has some really positive stuff to report. Um, I'm happy to report that we have the best attendance we've ever had since I've been in the high school. Um, we have less than 50 students who are absent to their meets. We're not showing up to school per day. Uh, I've never seen that in brick and mortar. So we have more kids showing up on the computer than we have in actual school. Um, all told, we have about 17 students who haven't come to a meet or who have not contacted us to have two-way communication about such a technological struggle, but are planning to come. Um, we have about 14 full-time Running Start students and a, some students who are part-time. So as Marcia alluded to earlier, our Running Start numbers are down, which means the higher FTE count in that area for the high school. Um, so far, we have about 715 students who are attending their meets at the high school. And we have over 140 students on the online academy, um, with about 30 of those students being a hybrid model that we're uh, building for them at the MEC. So all told, we're probably well over 100 projection for the high school. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, in fact, you have to have credits and, and do the walk towards graduation. So there's definitely some pull for that uh, to get your, you know, get your tail in front of the computer. Um, the teachers, as, as we went through, Matt and I were able to visit every single class, which was cool. We've never been able to do that at the start of the school year. We know we split it in half. We were able to pop into each class. And I was really buoyed by uh, the energy of both the staff and the students. Students were very talkative, interactive. Teachers were just in their game, and I, I think everyone, 
everyone has been waiting on, on bated breath to get back to some sort of normal and, and see each other. So that, that made me borderline teary uh, to see that. Um, so far, I'm, I'm aware of about seven withdrawals from the high school and about 30 new students. Uh, so that's a good trend that we're seeing. I think it matches what Chris has seen to the number of students who are uh, cho choicing out. Um, those students are choosing to stay in the boarding, so that, that's good news. Uh, short of that, um, I want to give my last bit of time to Matt Crossman, who's going to give a couple public shout-outs to some well-deserving people. Thank you, Cliff. Uh, yeah, I just want to say uh, there's some folks that in the month of August stepped up in such a huge way that we would not be here tonight where we are without them. And the first and foremost is our multimedia tech classified staff member, Gary Ann Fry. Uh, we worked five to eight, four to seven, made a schedule where we had evening events for Chromebook distribution. We're, we're just shy right now. I think around 600 Chromebooks have been distributed at the high school alone uh, to families in our community. And, and this woman is, has worked as a tireless champion. You heard about Jennifer Planellis. I don't think she's rested since June 21st. I honestly don't think she's taken a day off to support not just the high school, but our K-12 system, and it's incredible work that she has done at the teacher level to support an entire system that will be behind the scenes, unheralded, uh, but will, will, has kept our FTE up, and is doing amazing work, and got a lot of keys to iron out, but she's gonna, she's gonna be a champion. And then last but not least is our counseling staff, Kim Strasberg, our registrar. Um, these guys have been adjusting and pivoting daily with us through the month of August to get where we're at right now. Uh, and, and some of the work they had to do, we had to pull him back out of vacation early uh, and heard Dave allude to his counseling team at the middle school and, and just the work that they do. So um, uh, the, the highlight of my day in the last two days, undoubtedly, has been walking into a classroom meet and seeing the smiles on kids' faces because they're so hungry to connect with human beings, even if it's virtually. They miss school and they miss their friends and they miss their teachers. And I saw the last two days the power of what education brings to a community like Horty. And I'll leave you with that. that we're, we're rocking, we're alive, we're healthy, and we're kicking, and we're going to make it through this year. There's no doubt we got the right people doing the work. To you, Tony. Well, I feel the love, I feel the energy, and I feel the passion that has been demonstrated not only just tonight, but throughout the last five months of really tough work. I'm proud of our building administrators, our central office leadership, our support team throughout the district. We've done a fantastic job under very unpleasant, difficult, and new challenges that we've never encountered before. We're going to get better. We're going to get better at this. And, uh, uh, let them throw the next thing at us. We'll take it. We'll, we'll tackle it. We'll take it down to the ground. Uh, but uh, as they say, bring it on. We will take it on and do the best job possible. So uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, spending the time to present tonight. Uh, uh, Steve, I think we have Matt uh, giving a, a short presentation here on the uh, uh, context that we've had with the Orting Express. So anything you'd like to add there? Yeah, let's hear from the hero. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Tony. I, I wouldn't say that I'm the hero. I am just I just like to be the guy in the background trying to help make things work and help as many people as I can. Um, and, and I couldn't do it alone. I couldn't do it without uh, my text. Uh, have an amazing team. I, I really do. I, I have to say that they step up every single day to, to help me. Uh, I mean... Every problem that gets thrown at us, there is always one of them to jump in and lend a hand to just make it work. So um, it, it's been incredible. It's been the last couple of days have been really tough. Uh, but I think we were able to talk to over chat, text, um, email, and Facebook over 220 families that needed help on the first day of school. And that was uh, in, including, you know, Gary and Fry was helping along with uh, Jody Leonard um, and Michaela Kaling. And so on the first day, and, and it was tough because we did have some glitches that we had to work out, uh, but, but we got it all working. And it was awesome to actually see these families or hear them where, you know, they're struggling, they're so stressed, so frustrated. And when we fix their problem and you can, they actually log into the Chromebook and actually are able to start their classes, it was just awesome. 
So um, I know that I'm going to kind of share a little bit about the Orning Express, but I just want to say that to begin with because it, you know, it was pretty amazing. Um, and also, we have a filter system that allows us to kind of see how many kids are logging in and filter all their stuff and to see well over 2,000 kids that, or actually concurrent connections of over 2,000 people. It was amazing. It was awesome to see these kids, but I can actually see the kids are engaging. So that was pretty cool. Um, I'm going to drop the end of the chat. I'm going to drop the Ordering Express uh, link just so if you want to follow along there, I'm going to kind of go through it for just a couple minutes. Um, but I wanted to just drop that in the link so you could look at it. Um, and I, I will share it on my screen, but it might be a little bit smaller. So um, let me present this real quick. Here we go. And, and again, this I want to thank Tony on this because the, the Order Express was really his idea. And um, we wouldn't we wouldn't have been where we're at without it. I mean, I, I can't imagine those hundreds of families trying to get assistance um, and not being able to just reach out to a chat or a phone call or, or uh, send an email over to us or be able to send a text message. Um, so I really want to say thank you to Tony just because that idea, I was able to take it and get you know run with it a little bit. And so uh, that, that's been amazing. Um, so the Ordering Express, if you look at the page here, we obviously it's, it's where you go when you want to know. Um, and, and really, that's a absolutely the truth. I can't tell you how many families said we came to the site and we were able to get the information we needed to uh, to get started in school. Um, so first off, we had the, the Ordering Express, the call center, um, which was staffed by you know my techs plus the uh, Jody Leonard and uh, Michaela Kaling and uh, uh, Gary Ann Fry, and uh, it was awesome. It just the first day, just the phone and the the chats were just if the phone was ringing off the hook. We had more chats than we could we could access. And we'd have to tell them be patient for a minute. We'll, someone will contact you or we'll jump into the chat with you. Um, but uh, this has been just a uh, just a great place to go and get instant help. Um, and if at any point you guys have any questions about it or you have any comments and you want to uh, share something you think would be help make it better, I am always open to, to making this site as, as the best we can. Uh, so first, we just have some videos that will are, are really easy for students to watch and, and get some information on the how to navigate uh, Google Classroom, how to navigate getting into Clever, which is the single sign-on that we use for allowing kids to get into not only their Chromebook, but into uh, Edgenuity um, and into some of the other programs that the teachers use. Uh, and then we just give updates here. I know we kind of like a, bu a bulletin board almost, um, a place where they can get updates if, and, and tech can put in there if there's an issue. Um, as you can see here, this is something we were experiencing yesterday and, and a little bit this morning, um, just with the logins and allowing kids to uh, to get on here and get an instant fix for their problem. Um, and then we've had a, a, a lot of teachers have been putting in their, their tech tickets and, and they can to get help with their themselves, uh, with their classrooms, as well as their students. Um, and so we have a ticket system um, that they can go to, fill it out real quick, and, and one of our techs will jump on it and get it taken care of. Um, along the side here, I kind of went down pretty quick. Along the side, we have a bunch of other links uh, that will help get families the information they need, be it uh, Skyward access information or uh, a formula for the student to figure out their login, uh, username and password. Um, so that they can get logged into their Chromebook. Uh, also, the same thing with Clever. Um, if they're having any issues with Clever, and just just understanding and navigating uh, how to use these brand new technologies they've never had to use before because they weren't uh, online. Uh, it wasn't you know mostly online or 100% online learning. So, um, scroll back down here a little bit. And then we have the ta uh, teacher and staff report. And I know a, a lot of you have probably already seen this at our kickoff, but um, for those that haven't seen this, this is a, uh, a link to each one of the schools um, to the teacher's web pages, which allows the student to get 
um, the email information for the, their teacher directly. So if they're having an issue with uh, whatever uh, class work, um, they could absolutely email their teacher directly and get a, a response. Uh, as well as they can contact central office or, or district staff. Uh, or if they really just need information right away, they can jump right in the chat. And I know you don't see the chat here right now. We have hours set for the chat, but in the right-hand corner there at the bottom, uh, if you come to this page between uh, 8 in the morning and uh, 3.30, you will see a chat there that's available for you to jump on and chat with one of our uh, um, help associates. And then for counseling, we've, we've added in this section for counseling uh, so that if they need, someone needs help getting uh, a counselor, they, here's their contact information, their email address, and their phone numbers. Um, as well as resources that are outside of the ordering, for school, ordering school district. So, um, for instance, if you need help uh, getting here, I'm going to open it up just so you guys can see it. And I'm hoping you can see that. Um, oh, that just popped up. That's the that is our link to getting uh, high speed internet. I'm sorry. Here's your list of the links so you can see. Um, and I don't know if you're able to see that there with me because it might be a different window. Um, but basically, just uh, resources for like the uh, Boarding Family Support Center, um, the Adams Family Street, the Family Shelter in Tacoma. Um, just a number of the Ording Food Bank, a number of different resources that are outside of the school district that will help families in a myriad of ways uh, just navigating the, the COVID uh, and the, the struggles that come with that. So if you have any questions or comments, No, just awesome job. I love seeing all of this come together. And um, it's a level of communication that is so far above and beyond what we've done in the past. And yet when I see it, I'm like, I wish we'd been doing that all along. But I think this is what the community and our families and our students um, really need. And so I appreciate the thoughtfulness and the creativity and just this, just the day-to-day -day support for making this happen. Great job. Thank you, and and thank you, Tony. Again, like I said, this this wouldn't have taken off without him. So, uh, under, under Matt's leadership, we're going to see improvements being made. We're going to reach out to people, as I've said before. Uh, people will be making suggestions on way how we can improve it, and uh, this is just the beginning of something that's going to be really, really useful. We believe for all the members of our community, and so we're excited about it. And. And if, as board members, someone comes to you and says, you know, I need some more information on such and such, guide them to the Ording Express. It's where you go when you want to know. <laughs> Definitely. And administrators, I just want to thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the verbal reports because we were so worried about having a meeting tonight when you're in the thick of it and still trying to make those amazing things happen. And thanks for taking the time to talk with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Um, had the unique opportunity of kind of observing Alex's first day of online learning at school. And while he was mortified to have me in the background, I did sit out of camera shot. But I wanted to tell you, his first, his first period teacher was so into it and had all the technology pop in and they were commenting and asking questions. And then his second period teacher was like, I've got some pictures to show you and held up printed eight by 10 photos in front of the camera. And I just loved the, the contrast. And it was just as special in both ways. And so I know we've got a bunch of teachers out there improvising and making it work for their kids. And I just, I love it. So thank you. Well, and we didn't even, we didn't even spend any time talking about how intentional the buildings were in planning the first two weeks. Because we talked about uh, we talked about a really intentional and thoughtful opening for the first two weeks, and so those first two, these first two weeks of school are designed to prepare students and families for the online learning with the tools, with the protocols, with the norms, with talking about kids and their social emotional health, uh, study study spaces and practices. And they've mapped it all out for two weeks so that awesome. every single kid that's uh, either in the remote in the remote situation are getting the materials and the supports that they need. 
That's great. I can't wait. Well, I just want to say thank you guys. You all should take a bow because you've done a mm -hmm. great job. Great job. I see. I can see why they say owning small, big, was it big view, small community, whatever. But as a community, you guys have done a great job. We all can get that little hug because <laughs> you've done an excellent job. So you went to tries and tribulations and you have done it. So let's move forward and continue the year. Thanks for the right. service. Thank you. I got to ask a question. I was going to propose we move the board comments in front of the executive session, but it seems like we've gone right into that now. So can I just give a board comment now or can we just do that before? Because I'd like to give it to the... the sure, leader. you can. Go ahead. I just want to say thank you. Um, we, it's obvious that you have your staff's back, you have our kids' back, and you have our families back. And I think that's fantastic. I think that's where you need to be focusing. I know, you know, as, as we saw earlier, Marcy's kind of stressing the budget and what it might be. Um, I only speak as one board member, but if you guys focus on having the kids and the staff and the family, I'm sure the board will look at ways to try to have your back. And I, I think that's, Personally, I can commit to that we'll find creative ways to lessen the blow whenever we can. Um, so just focus on what's important, and that's the kids and the staff. Now focus on that. Leave the rest to those of us who are supposed to focus on that. And, and piggyback on George's comment, we will have your back. We, we will have you. your back. <laughs> Thank you. We do have your back. <laughs> Absolutely. Well done. Who knows? Thank all of you for spending the evening with us. I appreciate it. God bless. And we're going to move on to the next, next item on the agenda. Thanks, y'all. It will be the minimum basic education requirement. Steve. Yeah, you have the report in front of you. It just needs to be, uh, you, as you've reviewed it, we just need you to acknowledge uh, from the board, and uh, your signature will then be uploaded to OSPI uh, to acknowledge that the report is accurate and complete and truthful. Any questions or comments? Do we need a motion on this, Bonnie? <laughs> we do need a motion. Thank you. Motion to approve the minimum basic education requirement compliance for 2020-2021. All second. second. The first and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Next on the agenda is uh, executive session to discuss our uh, employment issue uh, with 10, 15 minutes. How long we need, guys? Hey, Tony, how, how long we think we need? I think they'll probably need about 20 to 25 minutes. Okay. We'll go to the executive session for 20 to 25 minutes. We'll come out with no uh, comments, and we'll just adjourn the meeting. So let's go to the executive session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank all of you.